Hello, Sector Watchers. Welcome to the 20th episode of Sector Spotlight on Tuesday, the 25th of February 2020. That's a lot of 20s. This is your weekly update on sector rotation and anything remotely connected to sectors, relative strength, and or rotational analysis. My name is Julius de Kempenaar, and I'm your host for today's show, based in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Rachel and Zag are with me at the Stock Chart Studio in Redmond to make sure everything will run smoothly. You can always send me an email with questions and suggestions, but if you want to participate while we are live, please don't hold back. By all means, the chat box is open during the show and we will monitor what's coming in. Just don't be shy. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get started with Sector Spotlight. Here are the handles where you can reach me. Uh, if you don't know them by now, then maybe make a note of it. And this is the agenda for today. We will be doing our usual overview of what's happening in asset classes and sectors. I have uh, two questions lined up out of the mail back that came in via the mail. I'm going to try to do one before the break and one after. We'll see how that goes. Uh, of course, we have the break in the middle and we have a new pair trade idea. So let's get some charts up here. This is the performance. I wanted to do the asset classes first, of course. And we will have the RRG for the asset classes. So for the last five days, a lot has changed. The US Treasury bonds, the, uh, the new one that we introduced last week, GOVT, is up 1.25%, which is very nice. And uh, all the way on the back, we got the, uh, the equity market, the stock market, down 4.11%, which is very notable. Uh, but do remind that we are still very, very close to all-time highs. So we'll see how that will evolve further. Um, here you see the performances, um, fixed income stuff right here, real estate underperforming because of the strength of the government bonds and the rotations clearly in favor of real estate here. You see the government bonds, corporate bonds, high yield, all inside lagging, but starting to move up. Commodities still pushing further, further down into the lagging quadrant. And the stock market is still inside leading, but very rapidly on its way to moving into the weakening quadrant. And we are now starting definitely to rotate opposite of the fixed income stuff that's right over there. If we go to do a similar exercise for the asset, the, the, the brr, sectors like this, and we'll bring in the as it be 500 sectors. This is all relative. Uh, we see that the outperformance over the last five days, not surprisingly, is coming from the usual suspects when it comes to defensive rotation, real estate leading, utility staples, and then to a lesser degree, materials, healthcare, industrials, financials still doing very well. And then on the, on the weak side, we got the winner of the last, I don't know how many months, maybe even years, technology down 1.9% versus the S&P 500 and communication services. If we make this in absolute terms, then we see a little bit more dramatic picture where all sectors are now down. Uh, and obviously, the order of events is the same. But all in all, um, I think like the average 4%, something like that. Um, on the RRG, you will see that these defensive sectors are moving uh, in the upper left improving quadrant, you see that technology is still on the right, but starting to roll over. Uh, and here is the stuff inside the, um, uh, the lagging quadrant. Let's bring this RRG to the left. And let me get my charts over here so we can actually see what is going on. Um, the S&P 500, uh, you know, the combined of all these sectors, uh, a big gap down. Uh, as I said, you know, we're, we're coming straight off an all-time high. Um, I have, well, personally, I've never seen a market that was crashing straight from the highs all the way down. So, so I am going to expect at least a bounce at some stage. Just not sure from where that bounce is coming from. But as you can see, there are a few levels on the downside that I'm watching. That's around the 315 area. 
<clears throat> where we had this little, uh, it's better visible on the daily chart, a little bit of a plateau that was formed. Uh, we have this low here, and we have the rising support line that is connecting the three major lows of last year. From a relative point of view, we have some damage. Um, the R RS line versus VBI and X uh, seems to be putting in a double top, and the RRG lines are rolling over. Uh, let's look at what that means for some individual sectors. Uh, here is XLB. That is a sector that was already well inside the lagging quadrant. Uh, it's still in there. It, it leveled off a little bit over the last few weeks. Uh, but what we see here is that it was not able, it's one of the few sectors actually that was not able to break to new highs. And we're now sort of breaking this trend line. As you know, I'm, I'm pretty uh, reluctant to call breaks like that because it depends completely on how you draw that line. And drawing that line is a very subjective thing. Um, but when we look at the relative image, the relative picture, um, that RS line is showing weakness, and that's confirmed by the RRG lines that are picking up that, uh, that breakout and that move lower for materials. We go to communication services, then we see that it did not do a lot recently. You can see that this is a, a very short tail compared to a few of these others that we'll run into later. Um, it's still above its breakout level, but that gap down uh, brought it back to a support level that's right here around that, I guess, 54 level. Um, but what's interesting is that we are still hovering above a what I think is an important support level in the relative strength versus SPY. Um, it's a very narrow range, but we broke this downtrend line, tested it, and we're now hovering above it, which means that this is becoming some sort of a double support area. So if this holds, then this communication services sector um, could become an outperforming sector in the weeks to come. And uh, it's, interesting, uh, it's an interesting story because about a year ago, I met with Sam Stovall, who is the, the creator of that sector rotation model that we have underneath the, uh, the perf charts on the Stock Charts website. And we were discussing the, um, the new the new sectors that S&P had introduced at the time. And, and, and you know, like, is that still a thing? And, and the one story that he said, um, what, what stuck with me uh, was regarding to telecommunications, not necessarily this sector as it is right now, communication services, but the telecom sector traditionally always was, um, was a defensive sector. And the way Sam explained it was that um, when when the economy is bad um, and, and things don't go that well, then people tend to travel less, but everybody is calling their mom and dad to, to tell them how they are and keep up with them. So airlines are going down, but telecom companies are going up. So that's how I remember that telecom is actually a very defensive sector. I thought I'd share that with you because I thought it was quite a funny story. Um, if we move over to uh, to energy, then you see that that this is a, a sector that we've been calling uh, weakness for 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 ages, and it is pretty much confirming what we were expecting. It's now actually breaking below this support level, and it's on the way to um, to its lows that were set in December 2018. Um, and look at that downtrend. Look at that relative downtrend. So I I think energy stocks should still be avoided. Um, I'm not going to say at all cost, but it, it is a very weak sector, that's for sure. Financials are con continuing their deterioration. Um, the breakout was nice. We, we, we pushed to a new high, but it didn't really materialize. And now we're taking out this in-between low, which means that we now have some sort of a double top completed. We're back in the downtrend on a relative basis, and the RRG lines are now both below 100 and both moving down, which positions the financial sector just inside the lagging quadrant and moving lower at a negative RRG heading. So just like energy, one of the sectors, I think that's better avoided for the time being. Industrials curling up inside lagging. Um, However, looking at that price chart, things are not very convincing. Just like financials, this is taking out its in-between low, some sort of a double top being completed. I mean, 
mind you, these are weekly charts, so things can change during the week. We can only, you know, complete, call this completed when we have a Friday close um, below these levels. But things don't look good for the time being. Um, the relative strength is still well below a former support level that I would expect to come back as resistance. So I, I am still very careful with industrial stocks, even though we see a little bit of a curl up, could see some sort of a pullback towards that breakout level, uh, but there are better sectors around. Technology, the darling of the last, what's that? 14 months, more than a year. Uh, and from a relative point of view, this is still not a bad sector, but we do have some damage on the price chart. Um, if I would draw a line here, that's probably broken. So I'm afraid that we need to keep an eye on levels around, let's say $90 for XLK um, to see where that finds support and if this long-term uptrend is still going strong and will hold up. Uh, it's too early to call. From a relative point of view, it's still one of the stronger sectors, but you know what happens when you're in a strong sector and things go south. This is where you get hit hardest. Uh, and you need some uh, some steel nerves to, to stick to that. We go to staples, uh, defensive for sure, uh, as we see, but still in the lagging quadrant. And, and I'm starting to see some damage on that nice trend channel that we've been calling for the last couple of weeks. Uh, again, this is a weekly chart and we're only a day and a half into the week. So things can change by the end of Friday. I am keeping an eye on this, but the relative strength is definitely improving. So uh, staples in times of distress, always a good sector to keep an eye on. If this crawls back above this support line here on the weekly, I'm definitely inclined to, to make this uh, one of my favorite sectors for the next coming weeks. And then the winner of this week is real estate. We had the breakout two, three weeks ago already. And we see now that there is a very con convincing low being put into place on the relative strength chart. And the RRG lines are now positioning uh, the real estate sector inside improving. It's got a very long tail, if not the longest on the plot, which means that there is a lot of power behind this move. Um, I'd say any, any pullback towards prices around 40 bucks are new opportunities to get in. Uh, if we ever get there. So any new low above 40 is a sign of strength for the real estate market. Utilities, one of the stronger, if the strongest sector for this week. Um, almost all time highs. Look at this relative strength line bouncing nicely off that support level. If we are able to take out the resistance that runs over these highs, then utilities will likely face another boost in upside direction, and they will definitely move into the leading quadrant. So this is definitely one of your defensive sectors to keep an eye on. And then healthcare, uh, not so good, not very, well, this should be defensive, but it really isn't. Uh, and the price shows you that. It was not able to take out its previous highs where we broke a trend line, recovered, didn't go above it. Support came back as resistance, and we're now challenging this low. If that breaks, I'm going to expect an acceleration further down towards the 90 to 50 area where the apex of that former triangle is coming together, giving us a double support level. And I mean, I'm trying to look into the future here, but if that happens, I think that this deterioration in the RRG lines will be translated in a break of relative strength below these lows accelerating the, um, the decline even further. And then we finish off with the discretionary sector. Um, you wouldn't expect that this is a defensive sector, but look at the position on the RRG. It's doing really, really well. The only caveat, the only drawback is that um, the velocity is declining. So the distances from observation to observation are declining, um, which makes it well, I'm not going to say dubious, but you've got to keep an eye whether this rotation is able to continue. But for the time being, it's holding up this support level. Uh, it's inside the improving quadrant, and it's starting to move right on the, on the RS ratio uh, line. So, uh, so that is good for the discretionary sector, for sure.
I see that we're already halfway to show at 45 minutes, so we're going to go for a quick break of about one minute, and I'll see you all back right after the break, and I'm going to check if there are any questions in the chat box. See you in a minute. And we're back. Uh, no questions in the chat box. Um, luckily enough, I got a few in the mail and I picked out two and I'm going to try and see if I can answer them both because I also want to squeeze in a new pair trading idea. Um, the, the first question that I want to deal with is coming from John and he is referring to pair trades. That's why I picked this question for today. I was thinking about the pair trade results you were showing yesterday on your show. I was wondering what your strategy is for exiting a pair trade as a winner. Obviously, one element is paying attention, as you pointed out in your program. And the basic answer is, of course, when the trade starts going against you. But hopefully, there are some signals you watch to give us a heads up. Um, a very good question and very timely. And I actually, it, it tied in very nicely with what I've been doing this morning. And you may have seen or not and if you have not seen it you may want to subscribe to the rrg blog for to get a uh, a note when new articles are posted because what i did is what i promised to do last week in the show is going over all the pair trades that were outstanding uh since we started doing these ideas in november um this is a rather long article because it covers all the trade ideas that I shot into the air. Um, and I took a sort of systematic approach for every trade idea, doing a post-trade analysis or post-ID analysis, I should say. So for every idea that we did, you will see, um, obviously, the pair that's involved. You will see the RRG as it currently is, with two arrows pointing to the week when the idea was launched. So if we go over AVGO versus uh, XOM, which was done on the 19th of November, you see that where, they, where the trails were at that time and what happened afterwards. And I am keeping a journal in a chart list with all these pair trays, all these relationships lined up with a vertical line on the date of entry and see how it went. Now, answering John's question, um, or John's question actually forced me to think about an answer. And, um, uh, and that's good because it forces me to actually think structurally uh, and, and come up with some sort of a procedure or, or a process. And what I, what I came up with is that, obviously, there are a lot of elements in a pair trade that you want to uh, keep an eye on. Um, after the, so the idea is launched, in my case, usually based on an RRG, something like this. Now then, when that trade is launched, you're in a position. What you then do is you actually track your position. And tracking that position can be, do, can be done on the RRG itself, but also uh, on the ratio chart itself, because the RRG shows all the positions or all the elements. Uh, once I have a pair trade, I'm not interested in the rest because I'm, I'm only looking at that pair, uh, at least for the P&L, and I can track that. So I'm actually watching the rotations on the RRG in combination with the, well, basically, this is the P&L of the trade. It's a ratio chart, but it's the P&L of the trade. Um, and when something happens in that ratio chart or in the rotation on the RRG, I'm going to make a judgment call whether I want to stay with it or not. Um, and for me, that would be turning around a trend that I'm trying to ride in the ratio chart, uh, trails that are turning around and going against me, um, or something 
on a price chart very significant that affects one of the legs, um, uh, which basically ruins the pair trade. So I've done that and I've tried to written a, a short post-trade analysis for all of these trades. Um, it's way too much. It's a, it's a very long article. It deals with 10 trade ideas showing you an RRG, entry points, post-trade analysis, P&L ratio chart for that thing, and whether I want to stay in that trade or not. Um, if you have time and you like this idea and this setup, go over it, you'll see all the ideas that, that we talked about and discussed in the show. Um, so I hope that that answers uh, the question good enough. Um, I have nine minutes, that is too short. So let me get to the, to the new pair trade idea. I'll save the other question for next week. And at least we have one more to deal with because we are coming at the, uh, towards the end of the month of February. A um, couple of days left, this is a short month, but it also means that we can have another look at the seasonality um, for the month of March and what we can expect uh, in the next couple of weeks from a seasonality point of view. And here is the chart from the spreadsheet that I made. I'm still happy to share that with anyone who wants it. I actually got, I had never expected this to be such a success. I got tons and tons of people who are requesting the spreadsheet and I love it because I can interact with these people. I, I try to pride myself answering pretty much all these questions and all these emails um, and I do it personally. Um, so, so let's have a look at what's going on uh, in March or what we can expect in March from a seasonal point of view. Um, to do that, I'm going to highlight the month of March. And as you see, um, and I'm now, I cannot move my mouse because I then I will lose my highlight. It's, it's a little bit, we, we need to get the guys at stock charts to program something like this. Cause I think it's a very cool visualization. Um, if you look at the numbers in the column in the table below, what I'm looking for, I'm not interested in anything that's somewhere, somewhere like between 45 and, and 55, because that's a, that's a coin, toss, coin toss in terms of whether uh, you could expect an outperformance for that sector for the next month. What I'm looking for is very high and very low numbers. Um, very high, because like if you have like utilities, XLU, you see in that column, you see 75 for the month of March, which means that over a 20 year period, 75% of the uh, occurrences, utilities outperformed the S&P 500 in March, which is an interesting number. That's, that's, that's odds are on your side. Now, if you look at healthcare right below it, you'll see 35. And 35 means that it has outperformed SPY 35% of the months over the past 20 years. But turn that around. It means that in 65% of the cases, healthcare has underperformed SPY during the month of March. Now, these are the numbers that I'm interested in, especially when I can put them together or, or put them against each other. So what I'm interested in is exploring the bear trade idea of being long utilities and short healthcare for the month of March. We're gonna, we're gonna dive deeper on the RRG a little bit later on, but from a seasonal point of view, um, utilities and healthcare seem to be uh, good picks in terms of having the odds on our side with utilities outperforming and healthcare underperforming. Um, we can have a quick look at what the expected returns would be. So again, uh, this, this, this chart shows you the average relative returns versus SPY for all these sectors over the same period. So for the month of March, we'll have utilities ex on average outperforming the S&P 500 uh, 0.8%. And we have healthcare underperforming um, the S&P 500 0.6%. Now, you may note that we have real estate at an average outperformance of 2.7%. That's that big column there uh, in gray. Um, 
that is an interesting one. And also from an outperformance point of view, it's at 72. I still decided against it because um, the, the results that we are using in this table, Accelerate, remind uh, mind you, is, is one of these newer sectors. So it has a, it has a limited, it has less data points than all the other sectors that we have on the chart. Um, so I'm going to think or take a position that the, uh, the 75 and the 35 for utilities and healthcare uh, are a little bit more robust numbers. That's why I choose them. We just saw the RRG and the price chart. There's nothing wrong with real estate. So you know, if you want to go some, with real estate, feel free. That's, that's probably going to be a very good sector in the next month of, as well. Let's look at the charts for both of these. Bring that back. The have I'm gonna put XLU and XLV on the RRG, and you'll see that that rotation is actually actually uh, supporting and confirming what we saw on the seasonal chart. So you see utilities insight improving, but rapidly heading towards the leading quadrant. And healthcare, we already knew that, um, is inside weakening and starting to head towards lagging. So this rotation is now starting to confirm or already confirming the outlook that we get from the, from the seasonal picture. Uh, let me quickly do this on a daily chart as well, see how that behaves itself. You see, kind of different picture. Uh, utilities still to the right of healthcare. Um, although they are both pointing upwards, I do like the utilities much more. The reason is the difference in tail length, it's much wider, it's much longer than the one that you see on healthcare, uh, which means that there is much more power to this move in utilities uh, than there is with healthcare. And if you look at the um, rotation of healthcare over the last days, you see that it is like jiggling around a little bit. And I think that, you know, the, with, with these short distances, the odds of healthcare turning around um, could be significant. Now, while saying that, I realize that this could also be the outlier and the black swan, that when one of these companies comes up with a, uh, a vaccine or a cure for the coronavirus, this could skyrocket anywhere. So. Um, this is a trade that we will have to continue to continue to close uh, to monitor very closely. Um, but I'm I'm trying to not be affected by what I see uh, or what I read in a newspaper, but just by what I see on my charts. And the charts are showing me that um, healthcare is not in good shape, uh, nor on the RRG nor on the seasonal uh, on the seasonal pattern um that's it for this week so i'm gonna give you my final chart here so here's the trade idea i'm gonna be long youths and short healthcare and i'm gonna monitor that more closely than i used to do uh, ladies and gentlemen this was the 20th episode of sector spotlight and i want to thank you for watching Please don't be a stranger and stay in touch. Sector Spotlight airs every Tuesday from 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern. Meanwhile, if you want to read more about sectors and RRGs, please go to the RRG blog on stockcharts.com or even better, subscribe using the, the link below each article and make sure you'll receive a nudge every time a new article is posted. Have a good day and I hope to see you back next week. Thanks.